Give it to me. Oh, I'll say, well, give it. I'll send. You know, so I give him my address. <laughs> the whole deal. And I said, man, I'll never hear from this guy ever again. You know, here's some whack job asking for Bill Jennings stuff. Two weeks later, I got a whole CD of Bill Jennings in the mail. <laughs> and you know, that little Charlie made me one of the greatest. And I don't know. It's a record club. You know, for steel guitar players. Um, of Jimmy Bryant, Speedy West is not on anything. It's not on. You're gonna give it to me, right? Because if not, absolutely, you're gonna have to give it to me. So you listen to a lot of steel guitar as well. Oh, man. You know what? I listen to every kind of. Music. Oh, this reminds me of one thing. Lorenzo Almeida. Anybody know Lorenzo Almeida? Yeah. Okay, he had a band called the Dan Saros. Check this out. Good. <laughs> from people out here? Somebody was asking about the amp. I, w I want to talk about this amp. This is a Masco ME27 is what it is. Hit. And, the, and the cabinet I bought off eBay I think for about $17 with $22 shipping. And it had a small amp, amp in there. One, you know, it's class A, one 6B6 and I could never get it in the thing. And it works but it doesn't work very good so I just realized that the Masco ME27 will fit right in there. You know, you could just push it in there. And then I got an Afro speaker. I got a projector, and it's good for... Well, I, I let Fred Kaplan play, play piano for it, so it probably doesn't sound as good as it does after he played <laughs> organ and piano. So I think he blew the speaker, but it somehow it still works when it cracks out. It used to be beautiful. But not now. <laughs> now it's all right. Very cool. Any other questions? I think that was a big one on the, on the amplifier. Yeah. Sig signature model Watson <laughs> amplifier. So I don't know. Do you, we have anything else before? Any more stories? Oh, oh the guitar. Okay, this guitar. Yeah, that's the best part of the whole deal. So Dan Dunham, fantastic luthier, you know, my friend, mm -hmm. has done so much work with me in the past. It used to be Steve Sos, but basically Steve's tapered off. But he was great for years and years. And he, I, I got to talk about Steve for a second. When I had the Espinada. We played up in Mammoth, right? And uh, I slipped, I had no case cord, I had this bag that I'd fit it in. And I, had, and I s slipped on these stairs in the snow and I knocked the neck loose. And basically, the binding on that guitar on this side was had come off. So I was putting a big old divot right there at B flat, and playing with Rod, so I figured, you know what? Since I knocked the neck off, I'm just gonna put another neck on it. So Steve goes, oh yeah, that's no problem. So I bought this guitar I think, for $25. You know, if you, you remember ever seeing the neck that's on there now, it has like a S, it's a silver tone neck. But the silver tone is all the same. So it's a 20 fret neck. Exactly, the sound, guitar sounds just like it did. So Steve, Steve puts the neck on the guitar and I go, how much do I He goes, I don't know, 30 bucks. I go, he goes, well, it's only a $50 guitar. <laughs> yeah. So I go, man, this is my kind of guy, man. You know, he really looked out for the, us cheap skates, you know. <laughs> now they're expensive, so it's funny how life turns around. Yeah. <laughs> to you. <laughs> I could buy H44s and Espinadas for forever, you know. I said, I'll never go slow. Like expensive. this one here, anybody know Johnny Cat? He's playing with Terry Hank. He's my buddy up in the Bay Area. He bought this because I was talking about him. I hadn't had one yet, but I watched Rick play his and, and played it a couple times sitting there. And he goes, yeah, they're pretty good. And he's a little short guy, this guy, right? And he's one of these guys that when he gets a guitar, he's like looking at himself in the mirror, like, you know, all day going, well, I don't know, it doesn't look so cool on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he goes, he's one of these guys, well, I don't know, the Lexus, a little bit too wide, but not too wide. Not, I mean, for you, it's fine, but a little too wide for me. 150 bucks. <laughs> so Frank, you were talking about Frank, right? Frank, I, he, I go, hey man, you got a Stratotone on there? I go, I want to get another one, you know, for a spare in case mine gets stolen. He goes, yeah. So he gave me a bare wood one uh, 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 for $100. So I took it to Dan, and Dan fixed that. He put another pickup on the back like mine. 
He did a, un, such a good, you know, he, he can tell you stories too, man. He's done work for, for people, and he hasn't sold them as original, but they have, and he saw it on eBay, like, I, I, can you name a guitar? Not without naming a person. Ah, uh, there was an airline, uh, like, Fire Jack, Jack White-ish one, which they all are now, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Come on over here. And some others. Uh, no, I don't have any. Uh, special stories. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, in other words, he he he, he fixed the guitar so good you could not tell it was original. You know, and he's he's a master of this stuff. So anyway, he said, I'm going to design some good kind of guitar for you. And I said, Well, I like these kind of tone pickups and, and the neck through idea. And I go, We got to come up with something because Harmony is back in business that isn't like the Stratotone, you know, so you don't get sued. So this is kind of a combination of a Wandre Dabbly guitar. Anybody hit to that? Mm -hmm. Kind of a bastardized version of the shape and with stratotone overtones to it. And I think it's a fantastic guitar. It's got a neck wire in most 12 strings, which is always my dream. I, I thought for years I'm going to get a, I'd love to get a, the nicest 12 string with a huge back neck in there. Because when I first started playing guitar, before I got the electric guitar, I had a a Spanish guitar that my, my, my grandfather used to go to the bullfights in Mexico and I don't know what the deal was but that guitar was probably a thousand dollar guitar in today's standards because I loved it. One day I talked back to my mom, I think I was on LSD, <laughs> <laughs> and I told her to shut up and she, she grabbed that guitar and Al Capong me and it went right through my head and I've been pissed off ever since and I never yelled at her ever again. <laughs> <laughs> So this neck reminds me of that, you know, which is great because it's so wide and big, and it's great for playing chords. Don't you, don't you agree? Yeah. He had a ball playing it too. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I get the next one. I've already put my weight. <laughs> yeah. Well, not the next one. The next one's mine. Oh, the next one. Okay. <laughs> the next, next. The next, the next, next, next one. That's right. So anyway, it's, I think it's going to be a, you know. I hate to say it, but I, you know, when when Don Mayer got into business, he had nothing at all, and I says, "Hey, man, you're going to make a killing." And that guy, I mean, right now in the in the tough times, he's making 600 bucks a week on pickups. It doesn't cost him a nickel, but he works hard. And Dan's going to be a working bumblebee back there. Uh oh, do I have to follow through? Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> you could opt out at any moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your wife's going to kill you. Put her down. <laughs> You have to move in with Don and Don on Shores. Oh, that's scary. You know, and, I, and, and, and it's funny, man. I mean, he's the only guy out of all the things. I've had three different amp companies. He knows one of them. I won't mention any names, but if it's not exactly to my liking, I don't follow through on anything. So I've turned down three amp companies and two different guitar companies before making a guitar signature model for me. Because it, it just went har harmony. When I went to the NAMM show, I go, look, man. I go, this is all wrong. This guitar could not be further wrong than what you got going here. It's basically a Telecaster. You know, you got a maple neck and an ash body. You know? Well, that's Eastwood, I'm sorry. But it doesn't matter. I'll mention all their names. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what? It's a good guitar for what it is, but it's not a Stratotone copy. You don't understand what I'm saying? It's, it's a, they're, they're fine instruments, but when you when make it look like something, how about having it really what it's supposed to be? Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah, I think when you when you got the uh, the uh, the East East E W the East yeah, Blue, yeah. he's a nice guy, man. Oh. Michael Robinson, he could not be a nicer person. So you know we're at the Blue Cafe, and you know and they say, have you heard about those? Says, oh yeah, man, I, I think that they could give me one, or you know, you gonna tell me check one out, and I, I got it, and you know I told them all that was wrong with it. He told me kind of the same. That, you know, th this wrong body, wrong neck, it's different, it's cool what it is, but it's not right. And then he looked at me and then he said, do you think I ruined my chances of, of them giving me this <laughs> Well, see, I like to get them so I can sell them. <laughs> Dillian actually owed me you know, two guitars every two years, you know, for, for well, I forgot what the contract, just for four years, right? So mm -hmm. they owed me four guitars, right? Well, they gave me the first two and then, all of a sudden, I never heard from that guy. I'm looking at, looking at the calendar, I'm going, I haven't heard from this guy in almost almost two years. I, I better do this before the contract runs out on that thing. So I go, and I looked on eBay, and I go, what's the most expensive Dillion guitar? <laughs> Plexiglass. They weigh about 20 pounds. You could never play one, but you could sit there and look at it. And guys want it because he only makes a few of them, because they weigh a ton, right? 
So I go, hey, give me one of those pucks you can drive. And he goes, oh man, we couldn't make notes. I go, that was a thousand bucks those things were going for. Right? So I got the fanciest Korean Les Paul thing with the most. You couldn't even figure out where you were on the neck. There was so much squiggly <laughs> stuff on there, man. But it was shining like hell. It looked cool, man. I sold that. He sold that. <laughs> I, just, I just took the pawn shop.